It's interesting because, you know, your past couple books have been these really inspiring stories of people uh, t overwhelming, or overcoming, you know, t difficult odds and, and achieving incredible things. And this book is interesting because it's, it's a little bit different. It, it is, it's more of a, there's a theme of David and Goliath that you have throughout the book. And it really seems like that's kind of the core of, of, of the book. Can you, can you talk about why you decided to go this direction? Well, it goes back to my fight three years ago uh, with the former governor and the fact that he was a machine and people told me he was the Terminator and that he was not going anywhere. But my family had a great tragedy that happened to them. My husband lost both of his parents in separate elder care facilities during the pandemic. Uh, our disgraced governor put 9,000 COVID positive patients into nursing homes. And that began my fight when I realized uh, that there was something wrong there. It was tragic. It was deadly. Uh, and someone had to stand up. And because it happened to my family and I had a platform to do that, I began the advocacy. And now we're three years later and we still don't have answers and we don't have an accountability. He's gone. Um, but that doesn't mean that uh, the tragedy is forgotten. So I began with that story, my story. And from there, I wanted to find others that went up against incredible odds against a person, a machine, uh, an idea, um, uh, you know, lockdowns during the pandemic, um, trying to get our kids back in school, things uh, that we found very challenging and others told us we couldn't do, but we continued to uh, to try our best to raise our voices and find others that were doing the same. And so that's where it came from. And I was able to find incredible stories. Uh, a lot of them come from tragedy. Uh, unfortunately, you know, one of the stories in there, my friend Ray Pfeiffer, who was a firefighter, fought with uh, my husband, was down at 9-11, of course, and and dug for months at Ground Zero to find uh, their fellow first responders that had died uh, during the World Trade Center attacks. Um, and he spent his dying days going to D.C. to make sure that his fellow firefighters and first responders got health care that they deserved. So out of that tragedy came goodness because, uh, you know, we he was able to prevail. And those first responders that do have, un unfortunately, cancer or related illnesses, you know, now will be covered by health care. But it was a battle. It was it went on for over a decade. Um, so, you know, sometimes stories out of tragedy or uh, overcoming incredible odds, you know, there is a light at the end of the tunnel to help others. Yeah, you know, there's a bit of the, uh, you know, parent lifts a uh, car off of their child type of vibes through to a lot of these stories, which is, is, yeah. pretty, is pretty incredible. And sometimes I think when you have these terrible moments, you have these tragedies that you go uh, down a terrible road, you wind up doing things that you never would expect yourself to do. I, I, one of the, you mentioned the, your story, of course, with, with Andrew Cuomo, and, and there's a lot of COVID underlying uh, through a lot of the stories. The Ron Kim story was really fascinating to me. Uh, you know, he, he's a guy that I honestly didn't know much about. I heard him a couple times early on in the COVID situation talking about his story. And like, I got to be honest, I was a bit cynical. I, you know, I, I, I hear New York Democrat and, and you know, my, my eyes start to roll automatically. But he Your wound, spidey senses. Yeah, exactly. He, he wound up being an incredibly important voice. And I don't know if any of the stuff that happened with Cuomo would have happened without what he did. Can you tell, can you tell people a little bit about his story? He's incredible. And, you know, what happened to our families, because his family was affected as well. His his uncle died in a New York nursing home. And so it was personal for him. And it wasn't political, right? I don't even think of him as a New York Democrat. Yeah. He is, he's part of my family now. Mm -hmm. And the fact that he really went up against a Goliath, I mean, he was threatened by Andrew Cuomo. He got a phone call uh, saying, here's what you're going to say, Mr. Kim. Are you an honorable man? Uh, and basically said, Basically, you didn't see that crime, okay, happen. And here's what you need to say. And if you don't, bad things are going to happen to you. That's basically what he told him on the phone. And Ron, in that decision with his wife and, and beautiful family, had to decide, do I stand up against this machine, uh, this dynasty politician, because I know he's wrong and I know he's lying, and it's against my 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 political, uh, you know, 
career as well. Uh, my career is probably going to be ended by this guy. But it's in that moment that you make that decision of what's right or wrong. And that's exactly what he did. And truly, his story is an American hero story. Um, you know, he is an immigrant. His uncle, who died in the nursing home, he was the one that sponsored his family from South Korea to come to America, to have that American dream. Uh, and, you know, he's still uh, he's still in politics. He's an assemblyman in Albany. And he and I have been working together uh, to try to make the situation better. I even had lunch with him today. <laughs> you know, he really is truly a, a, such a good friend of mine. And we'd never talk politics, you know. Uh, it's, it's great. I mean, it's just, you know, you could tell that there's a lot, and there's several stories in the book about this particular period. You talk to a couple of uh, Andrew Cuomo's accusers as well um, and go through their stories. And it's just amazing the, the, the group of people that came together to, to hold this guy accountable. It, if it was just one wing, if it was just one group, it was just one person, there's no way this would have happened. But, mm -mm. you know, number one, because Andrew Cuomo was so particularly awful and had done so many terrible things, a lot, and, and people just decided to step up no matter what their connection was, whether they whether they agreed with each other or not uh, to, to, to hold this one guy accountable. I and mean, it really is an incredible story. And I think with all of the stories in there, if truth is on your side and you believe in your cause, others will stand up, you know, and, and it really does sometimes take one person. But um, if the message is correct and truth is on your side, then you're going to have people that rise up. You know, one of the stories in there is a familiar one, Miracle on Ice, the 1980s hockey game, right? When uh, it was US Team USA against the Soviets and no one thought Team USA was going to win, right? Um, but I, I talked to the captain, Mike Arruzzioni, uh, who goes back to that time and says how important that moment was for America, for all Americans to kind of get together and have that feel good story. But he mentioned, he's like, it wasn't me. It was a team of people, you know? And I think that is the same message in all of the stories, whether it's a person going up a big to a big dynasty politician, you have to have other people that have your back. Yeah. I gotta say, I did not remember they only had two weeks to put that team together. Which is I, it's unbelievable, incredible. I mean, one of the most historic teams in American history, and they kind of just threw it together over a couple of weeks. It really, uh, yeah. it really is an amazing story. Um, let me go to another one. Uh, uh, Adam Curry. The story of Adam Curry is amazing. Here's a guy who's just like an MTV J VJ. You remember mm -hmm. him from back in the day, introducing songs uh, and videos. And you, I mean, he is one of the inventors of podcasting. Like people don't realize how early he was on all of this stuff. And, you know, his story, I thought, had some really interesting lessons. And maybe you could talk about one in particular, the difference between uh, MTV.com and Elvis.com. Oh, beautiful story. Um, you know, he really is a pioneer for many things. The podcasting, obviously. Um, his mind, I mean, he's a brilliant man uh, to know early on how big the Internet was going to be and to know those domain names like mtv.com, elvis.com, curry.com, which he still owns, by the way. And, you know, it was basically going, uh, meeting with a bunch of guys and saying, I want to, I want to have this domain name and, and that, and you registering and that, and that's all it took. But at the time people didn't realize that. Right. And so he registered mtv.com and said, I'm going to use it because the kids are on this, you know, and, and MTV at the time was like, well, I don't, we have AOL.com and that's all we need right now, right? Mm -hmm. um, so it's his story and how MTV, you know, came back at him and said, we're going to sue you. We want our MTV.com back. Um, but because, you know, he's a really kind man, had they just come up to him and said, Adam, listen, can we have our MTV.com back, please? He would have given it to them. But instead, it was lawyers knocking on his door saying, we're going to sue you for it. Even though many times they had said it was fine that he had MTV.com. So the part about Elvis.com is he registered Elvis.com, knowing that someday it was going to be big. And he was he was getting emails from people when we were not on the Internet, but people that still thought Elvis was alive because of Elvis.com. So he said he would get these beautiful emails like, hey, man, I always knew you were alive. Um, but several years later, he did get a message, a phone call from Lisa Marie Presley, 
Elvis Presley's daughter, who, of course, we uh, we lost a few weeks ago, tragically. Um, and she said, Adam, uh, I'd like Elvis dot com. I'll pay you whatever you want. And he said, Lisa Marie, you can have Elvis dot com. And he, he just gave it to her. It's a beautiful, amazing story. And I think that sort of translates to if we're nice to each other, if we're kind to each other and ask politely, you'd be amazed at what can happen. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, to put this in the context of the conversation, MTV.com, MTV acted like Andrew Cuomo would act, right? They tried to bully him. They tried to harass him. <laughs> the Andrew Cuomo is awful mug still exists. That Oh, it's still appropriate. <laughs> oh, it sure is. Oh, it sure is. That one will oh, never go out of style. Oh, I this up here. <laughs> there you, there you go. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Got the other side too. Uh, uh, that's fantastic. Hey, uh, let me ask you one more before before you go. Um, you have a kind of running story throughout the book uh, about your son, and he he was in a, a, a um, uh, an incident where he was being bullied a little bit at school, and you kind of take us through the how that started, how you heard about it, and how it wound up. And I thought it was a really uh, it was a really good, interesting story for all of us to learn. Uh, about how we should treat each other and, and, and how, at times, when we're looking out for other people, it makes us more powerful. I'm going to start to cry. You know, I've done a lot of interviews about the book, Stu, and you're the first one to bring up my son. Oh. Um, and that story is so important because, um, you know, he we got him into a new school. And again, this has to do with COVID and, and schools being closed. Um, the, the Catholic school was open. And um, we, you know, he's still there. It's a wonderful school. He's having a great time. But as a new student, um, you know, he was kind of targeted. Uh, there was one boy that every day would would really bother him. And he would come home crying and saying, Mom, you know, I don't know why he's so mean. And we did everything, right? I called the teacher, the principal. Um, I, I wanted to do everything in my power without, you know, kind of disrupting the apple cart, right? You don't want to be sure. that one that comes in and starts calling calling the parents and and he's brand new to the school but I I tried to do it as organically as possible and he just got kind of used to it right and some days it would be worse than others some days he would ignore him um and then one day in the in, basically in the schoolyard at recess the bully started targeting another boy who happened to be Theodore's good friend and when Theodore was the target, he just kind of took it, right, and internalized it and would go come home and cry and tell me about it. But when the bully was picking on his buddy, that's when Theodore got the courage to say something like, why do you always do this? Why are you such a bully? Don't bully my friend. Um, you know, go pick on someone else your own size type of thing. And he told me that he came home and he, he you could tell he was very proud of himself and he said mom you know i stuck up for my buddy today that bully was 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 being mean to my friend and i told him that that you know he needs to stop doing that and i just thought oh my goodness you know what a lesson it it's one thing to be bullied yourself um but to stand up for a, another person what a lesson that was and at the end of the book uh i talk about the fact that you know, even though my son and the bully are not necessarily friends, uh, the bully has gotten much better. Um, and I credit my son, you know, I credit my son for, you know, speaking up and, and saying that this is a, this is wrong behavior, um, and, and sticking up for somebody else. I mean, he's 12 years old and he's learned that lesson so early in life. And so that's kind of how I wrap the book up, you know, that we can learn lesson from, from the schoolyard and, and a boy sticking up for his buddy. Mm, that's so cool. Uh, yeah, well, I mean, that, that's how you know you're a good parent right there. When your kid, like what, when my, my son every once in a while sticks up for my daughter and I just like, ah, oh, it's the best moment, I think, as a parent. It really is. Um, yeah. Janice Dean, Fox News senior meteorologist, host of the Janice Dean podcast and author of I Am the Storm, inspiring stories of people who fight against overwhelming odds, which is available now wherever you get your book. Janice, so great to see you and thanks so much for coming back on the show. You're a good human being. Uh, <laughs> thank you so much, Stu, and thank, thanks for having me on. And I hope you'll come on my podcast as well. I would love to. Anytime, Janice. Thanks so much. Mwah.